Welcome back to In the Moment. I'm Lori Walsh. We're dedicating this hour to talking about sleep, insomnia, and seasonal affective disorder. Jennifer Kirby writes a blog. It's called If Not Now, When? And she recently posted a story about her own insomnia and how she approached searching for a solution. You can find her work online at jenniferkirby.us. And she's with us now in the SDPB Sioux Falls studio. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. You're actually the reason this whole hour came together because I read this (laughs) blog post and I said, that's what we need to do because I keep hearing people talking to me about how they're having a hard time getting motivated. It's hard to get off the couch. They're super tired. It's February. Um, And then I read your post and I thought, perfect. Let's do a whole hour on this and close the hour with uh, Jennifer's work. So thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. It does seem to be a very prevalent problem. It does. All right. So this was something that was not a problem for you. And then all of a sudden it was. Tell us a little bit about your own sleep patterns and how they changed. Yeah, I think um, I was always a a pretty good sleeper. If I had problems sleeping during the night, there was usually a clear reason. And so I could kind of, you know, cause and effect. That was fine. Um, But maybe as I'm getting older, I'm 50 now, maybe um, hormones are starting to change. But just increasingly, I started to notice that my sleep wasn't as consistently good as I would like it to be. And I had been listening to an expert talking about the importance of good sleep, primarily for brain health. And um, he said, if you need more than nine hours of sleep, there's something wrong with your sleep. The quality of your sleep isn't good enough. And I started thinking, I usually think I need more than nine hours because I would be in bed quite a long time. So it made me to start thinking about the Maybe it wasn't such a quantity of sleep issue for me, but more of a quality of sleep issue for me. And I love how you approach this because (laughs) you said, I'm going to put my business school uh, (laughs) research skills to work and I'm going to start tracking. How did you track your sleep to find out what was going on and if it was in fact a problem? Sure. Sure. I just tracked very informally, but I thought if I just tracked... First of all, when I woke up, what was the Your idea of informally is different than mine. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) My, my idea of informally is to wake up in the morning and go, how was that? Okay, but no, you, you tracked. <laughs> well, I think writing it down is key. Yes. That's uh-huh. the most formal part of it. But I would just give myself a grade A through F um, in terms of how well did I sleep? How good do I feel in the morning? And then I knew there were certain variables that helped me sleep better. And for me, that is exercise. Um, the more strenuous, the better. It doesn't have to be a long time, but it does help if I'm exercising. Also, if I do yoga, that helps me sleep better. And I also knew meditation would help me sleep better. You know, I don't drink, so that's not an issue. Um, caffeine consumption is almost none. And so I, some of those other variables that might be relevant for some people didn't apply to me. But I kept track for about just seven days. I thought, I'm going to see if I have any patterns here. And I started to notice a pattern. I didn't sleep well, night after night. And then I also started noticing some of those things that I knew would help me sleep well, I wasn't doing. And it's easy to think, oh, I'm taking care of myself. I'm doing all these things to help promote good sleep. But when you see it on paper, it's a little bit of a reality check. Like, hmm, I say I want to sleep well. I'm not doing everything I can do to make that possible. So it was kind of a come to Jesus moment, looking in the mirror, thinking, well, there's something you can do about this. So I just decided to get really serious, um, adding meditation into my daily routine. And in the past, it's something I've, you know, done on and off over the years, but it usually gets crowded out by other priorities. But I started to think if this truly is a priority for me, I'll find the time. And so um, I started to do that. And I, there's a website I like, um, Tara Brock is the host of it. She has countless meditations, um, guided meditations on her site. And I started doing a 20 minute meditation during the day and then a 15 minute meditation before I went to bed. And immediately, immediately I started sleeping well. I mean, it wasn't even like wait a couple of days. It was the next night. That was it for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and from then on, it's just been no problem. I haven't had the nerve to not meditate because <laughs> I do not want to go back there. The motivation is very strong right now. But let's, yeah. I want to, let's explore that a little bit because you know, I don't want to go back there. And so many times where you're in, you're sort of living in a problem, whether it's poor health, you know, your diet is, is just not right and you kind of know it, but you're not doing... Once you get to the other side of that, you don't want to go back. The difference for you was that big 
where you said the reward, the reward for the work that you did was right. that big that, right. um, that you did not, you do not want to backslide. No, absolutely. Now I wake up in the morning before my alarm goes off. I almost have this feeling of subtle optimism every day that I didn't have. And then I've also... You say that with a big question mark, like suddenly I'm optimistic. (laughs) Well, or I'd feel like, is it Christmas tomorrow? No, you just slept well. just in a good mood (laughs) and you slept well. Yeah, yeah. And 35 minutes sounds like a tremendous commitment, but then I would compare that to the hours of 1.30 to 4 a.m. Right. Where I'd be lying in bed, and that's a much larger chunk of time. And so if you think of it in a pure trade-off, it's not such a large investment for a, a good night's sleep. Yeah. So as we go back on this hour that we were just talking about, nobody really dug into the idea of stress management. Um, and you, you mentioned it in this column, not only as something that you really easily recognize that if you're stressed out about something, it will affect your sleep, but tying into this idea of meditation and how it worked for you. And to be clear, this isn't the solution for everyone no. listening. It's an example of how you found your solution. Exactly. Um, but talk a little bit, if you will, about your personal experience. You're not a medical professional. Your personal experience with stress and sleep or, you know, that sort of anxious feeling or anxiety in sleep. How, how closely intertwined do you just intuitively think those two things are? Oh, I, for me, and like I, like you said, it's not the cure for everyone. I think that's what tracking can help you identify what works for you. Mm-hmm. But for me, they're huge. I would say about 10 years ago, I took an eight-week class called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. And John Kabat-Zinn is a researcher out of um, MIT, started this curriculum. And um, our homework was to meditate. And we had specific things that we needed to do. And because I'm conscientious, I was always going to do my homework. And so um, I started seeing the benefits when I took that class. And I think it, you know, your brain always wants to think. That's just what we're built to do. But with meditation, you keep bringing it back to your breath or to your mantra or to whatever you want to focus on. And it somehow calms down everything. And then that calming even, you know, can sustain itself through the day and even into the night. And um, for me, it's been a huge, huge, huge change. Um, You know, I can't say it's going to work for everyone, but, um, you know, it's free and um, no side effects. The side effects, I guess, are sleeping well. (laughs) (laughs) let's talk about meditation for people who have not entered that world and who maybe have a misperception about it and think that it might be difficult to do um you start with a guided meditation and a website that you found so tell us a little bit about what um the you said tara brock yep b-r-a-c-h so if you go to her website for example and there are many i have an app called calm and i use the calm app for guided meditation What is what is meditation to you in that in that context? Well, I really like her meditations. She has some basic meditations, so you can kind of choose that category and then look at the basic ones. Um, and basically, it she'll be reminding you to um, focus on your breath, and then she'll remind you periodically to, if your mind has wandered, to bring it back to your breath. And um, it's pretty. It's they say it's simple but not easy. Mm. So, um, so that's, and it's nice, I think having someone guide you through it. And then also when the meditation's done, you know, you're done. Um, so that's, um, been really helpful to me. And then, um, Tara Brock also kind of weaves some spiritual lessons into her, some of her meditations, which I appreciate too. And they're universal, um, things that everyone would agree with are, are a good thing. So, um, there's a lot to be learned there, I think. Yeah, she has a new book. I think it's called Radical Compassion. I think so. And have you seen Have you seen that book yet or not? I've heard but, her talk about yeah. it. So the idea is just again, and I want to get back to this idea of stress and sleep because it can be such a cycle for people when they don't sleep and then they don't have the energy to think clearly. They're forgetting things. You start. I mentioned earlier in the hour. If I haven't got a good night's sleep, I start thinking there are other problems that don't really exist. So I'm like, oh, I must be losing my memory. Well, no, I'm not. I'm just tired. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but this idea of, of coming again and again to compassion um, for yourself and, yeah. and, you know, for your life and for the world yeah. is maybe something we all need a dose of right now. Yeah. And what she says recently that has resonated with me is, let's say you have an unpleasant feeling. It's okay. There's yeah. room for it. You don't have to push it away. I wish it wasn't there. It, it belongs. 
And so you don't have to run from it. And what a great reminder. Yeah. And, and again, for folks who are listening, I just want to you know, wrap up. You can find Jennifer's work at jenniferkirby.us. Um, I subscribe to your blog because I just, I, I love the, the, I love your writing. Oh, thank for you. me, uh, you know, meditation might be writing. For someone else, it might be exercising. It might be actual meditation. Uh, we hope this hour has sort of helped empower people to pay attention to their sleep how it's really affecting your life, because even your husband noticed the difference <laughs> after you were, uh, had sort of solved some of these problems in your life and said, you just look different. You don't have those yeah. dark circles. Right. You're a much uh, you know, uh, more vibrant human being to be around. And sometimes you wonder if it's not Christmas morning because you just wake up. And <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, my husband said, please don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Kirby, thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, your words online. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank you for having me.